Do you like going in circles? Connor Felipe must love it. For the second straight year, he took the win in the night before the 500 run at Indianapolis. Now we're on to Iowa. Another oval track opportunity awaits. A chance to overtake Jack Hawksworth, the points leader, whose oval track baptism in Indy was uninventful, but also uninspiring. Iowa offers him a chance to improve as well. Both drivers will have to deal with Sage Karam, who won at Iowa a year ago. Possibilities galore as the Star Mazda Hot Shoes tackle the series' fastest track. It's coming your way next. Welcome to Iowa Speedway. We're in Newton, Iowa for the Star Mazda Championship, part of the Mazda Motorsports Hour. Today, it's the Star Mazda 100. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. IndyCar star James Hinchcliffe is alongside, and Mark Allen has our coverage today down on Pitt Road. Two consecutive oval challenges for the Star Mazda teams and drivers. James, a faster place than Lucas Oil Raceway. Yeah, this is a much different racetrack from LORP, and the high banks here, I think, are really going to be a challenge for these drivers and play into the race today. That second groove is going to be a big key for passing. One of the title contenders, Connor DiFilippi, waxed him at Lucas Oil Raceway. Not the quickest guy here, though. Not the quickest, but we've seen that he's smooth, he's smart, he's mature, he knows how to move up to the front. He's one of four drivers who actually ran this race last year, including the defending winner, Sage Karam. All right, let's meet some of those title contenders. Here's Mark. What did you learn at Indy that you hope to apply here? Well, Indy was obviously a testing weekend for us. Um, you know, we found a few things out with, uh, you know, the car, and we, we, we realized where, you know, myself and the team you know could improve coming to coming to this oval which is it's quite a different oval to indy but you know it's all still relevant and um, and yeah we, we just tried to put that into practice how confident are you going into this 100 lapper i think you know, i'm really confident i know that i know the team's uh, ready to rock we had a great performance in indianapolis um you know the home coast racing boys always have a fantastic here, car here at iowa and i know it's just gonna be a matter of uh you know us working together smoothly and just putting in a solid qualifying effort and going out there and uh, having a good race right now. It's just, you know, got to keep the championship in mind and keep gathering good points. Um, hopefully we can, you know, come out of here with a win, uh, if not a podium. So this will be a tough place for these guys. And James, the weather's an issue here. It has been raining on and off all weekend long, which certainly affects the track conditions here at Iowa. And let's take a look at the speedway. It is a 7 eighths of a mile oval, so it's a short track in length, but it really races like a super speedway because of these high banks. Having a car that works both lanes is going to be very important, and that leads us right in to the Mazda keys to the race. The first key right here is, like I said, the car must work well everywhere. High lane, low lane, that's going to be important for getting passing done. Next point is timing the passes of the lapped cars. In a short track like this, you're going to come across lapped cars, and you can lose a lot of time in the middle of the corner if it's not timed right, and saving the tires for the end. 100 laps, but no pit stops here in the Star Mazda series, so conserving those tires to be strong at the end is going to be very important. And we know all teams up and down pit road will watch the weather radar closely. Some dark clouds in the area. As we get set to get started, Mark caught up with our pole sitter earlier. You're fast in both practice sessions and you have the pole. What do you know about this track that nobody else does? Uh, well, I, um, I know how to win here and we did it last year and um, I know what it takes to win at this place. So I'm um, really looking forward to the race. Uh, I mean, we're in the best start starting spot to get the win. So I'm just really excited to get this thing going. All right, Sage Karam will be a driver to watch. Mark Allen, something else going on down on pit road. What's the story? Guys, number two points man Connor DiFilippi was one of the fastest cars in practice, but qualified a disappointing eighth. The culprit? Connor said an engine gremlin reared its head and they have been unable to resolve it. So while he'll try to win the race, the bigger question is whether he'll last to the finish. And that's always a big thing that weighs on a driver's mind when you know going into the race that you've got a bit of a problem. So it'll be interesting to keep track of him. We sure will. Karam on the pole. Points leader Jack Hawksworth alongside. Petri Savanto and Martin Scuncio make up the second row of the 81 car. One of the Pelfrey entries. Scuncio in one of the Yunkos cars. Gustavo Menezes will start fifth. Zach Beach, a pole sitter's teammate, of course. One of your Andretti Autosport mates qualifying sixth. Diego Ferreira, Connor Felipe, the driver who was so strong at Lucas Oil Raceway. He'll be back outside row number four. Rest of the start lineup. Gabby Chavez will line up ninth. Bruno Pauli will start from 10th here at Iowa Speedway. We go back to row number six. Juan Pedro Hita in the nine car. Zach Meyer in the 66 will start from the 12th position here today. Andre Mendez and Ashley Freiberg will make up row number seven. And then shotgun on the field. Camilo Schmidt 
in car number 20 will go from 15th spot. James, a whole different ball game than Lucas Oil Raceway here today. It certainly is. Where we Lucas Oil, we saw the high line was key. You had to make passes down low. I think you're going to see the exact opposite here today. Car setup is very different, even though the race strategy is kind of the same. And this will be a lot about who can handle the very high speeds at a place like Iowa Speedway, much quicker than where we were a few weeks ago, Lucas Oil Raceway. Five rounds are complete in this year's championship. Jack Hawksworth has a 12-point lead over DeFilippi. Then it's 20 back to Martin Scuncio. Gabby Chavez is close, as is Juan Pedrojita. I suspect our champion will come from one of those top five drivers. I think that's a pretty safe bet. It's been a strong deal so far. And all those guys have been driving very well. It's going to go down to the wire. Field lining up for the green. Let's get a final comment from Mark Allen on pit road. Guys, pole sitter Sage Karam said he wants to win the all-important battle into turn one on the green because that will give him the best chance to win. Outside pole sitter Jack Hawksworth said, yes, I'd like to be first into turn one, but I've got to keep my eye on the bigger picture. In other words, the title chase. Getting ready to go green. Off they come from turn four, and they go five wide. Almost looks like contact between two of the Pelfrey cars down low, but Sage Karam gets the jump. He will enter low and lead into turn one. Martin Scuncio on the outside trying to get around Jack Hawksworth. Looks like Scuncio's got a run to go to second in the Pullman bus car. Like I was saying, passes can be made around the outside here because of the progressive banking. A little wiggle from Scuncio down, and he's going to cut down, take some of the air off Haw Hawksworth, who's going to have to lift. And there goes DeFilippi on the outside. Connor DeFilippi from California, an acknowledged oval master at a very young age. And you've got to be willing, I think, to, to run up high here and, and take advantage of the opportunities that come your way. You've got to know what the car can and can't do very early as we see the field spreading out three wide. Zach Veach in the between two Pelfrey cars into three. But how about Connor DeFilippi already up into the third position after not a great qualifying? Petri Savanto in the 81, also one of your early movers. DeFilippi with a good move. Zach Veach trying to get going here, but Sage Karam from the pole, your early leader. Zach Veach going down low, and that's the thing. You can make passes on both, both uh, lanes of this racetrack as we see more side-by-side -side running. When the tires are fresh early on, you're going to see a lot of this side-by-side -side action. As the tires wear, you're going to see guys ebb and flow a little bit more. Of course, this is 100 laps here on the 7 eighths of a mile oval, and Karam off to a great start, quick lead. Is this one of those racetracks, since the nature of this is so fast that you're flat to the mat most of the way around here, can you make up ground here? You certainly can. I think what's important right now is Sage in the clean air is taking advantage of that. In clean air, you can run flat out when these tires are new. And for the first half of this race, with a good, a good handling race car, he'll be able to do that. What's important, like I said, is managing those tires so that later in the race, he doesn't start just having to lift so much that the guys behind him are really able to close that gap and attack. Karam, the dominant player here a year ago in the Comfort Revolutions car, one of the Andretti Autosport machines. You told me earlier, and you told our audience earlier in the season, uh, James Hinchcliffe, that getting acclimated to oval track racing was one of the hardest things you had to face when you got to IndyCar. It really is. It was the hardest thing when I got to Indy Lights, and then even jumping up from Indy Lights into IndyCar, that extra speed that you experience is incredible. The race craft is so different. The setup required, the feel required from, from road course racing is so different. It really is a completely different skill set. So that's why you're seeing the guys with some oval experience really coming to the top, and guys that are new to it, like Jack Hawksworth, they're still learning. He's a phenomenally talented racing driver, and he will pick it up. But on these ovals, sometimes there's no substitute for experience. For ninth, back to Diego Ferreira. Gustavo Menez is the 57 and the 83, one of the Pelfrey cars there as they funnel up onto the back straightaway. How big is the draft for these Star Mazda machines here? Because the straightaway here is pretty short, the draft isn't as big at a, as, as it would be at a, a bigger speedway like for us, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Obviously, it's bigger than it would have been for these guys at Lucas Oil Raceway Park, but it's all about placing the car in the right position in the middle of the corner so that you're getting some draft but still have enough clean air to keep your foot in the throttle. It really is about car placement. It's, it, it's like an, oh, it's a 100-plus mile an hour game of chess right now for these drivers. Sage Karam has dominated, qualified on pole in the 88. He's led all the way so far, opening up that advantage over the 22 of Scuncio. Here's the battle again for third. DeFilippi and Hawksworth really going at it. And, and DeFilippi's being smart here. He's given Hawksworth the room on the inside, but only just enough. Jack's having to enter so tight and keep the car so tight that he's, he's going to have to lift. He's getting a little bit loose. He's getting a little bit understeer. That car doesn't look like it's handling quite as well as DeFilippi's, but we also know that there might be a slight power issue on DeFilippi's car. Handling is crucial at Iowa. Karam continues to lead. We'll be right back with more of the Star Mazda Championship. 
Welcome back to Iowa Speedway, the Star Mazda Championship. 100 laps today on the Mazda Motorsports Hour. Alongside James Hinchcliffe, Ibrick Benjamin, Mark Allen with our coverage today down on pit road. Still battling for position third spot. Connor Filippi in the Yunkos 2 car has that spot. Hawksworth in the 82 close, but not able to mount much of a challenge. But he's got plenty of time to work with. Connor Filippi, a guy I expected more from, frankly, here. We heard he might have a, an issue with that race car coming in, but as dominant as he was at Lucas Oil Raceway, goes to show you the speed difference in a half mile and a track that's almost a mile in length can be everything. Yeah, he can be an absolute, uh, a huge amount, a huge difference. We can see here Jack trying to use the draft. He's probably going to look low. All right, he's, he's being smart here. He's, he's feeling it out. He's not being too aggressive too early. So we see Connor push up the racetrack a little bit there. Like I was saying earlier, it's all about car placement when trying to make a pass here at Iowa. Hawksworth about four car lengths behind DeFilippi. This is the fight for third. Washes up the racetrack just a little. Weather is iffy. Got to get past halfway to make this an official race. I'm sure all these teams looking at the radar saying, OK, uh, on the radio is telling your drivers, make your moves now. Don't waste time here. It's almost like you change your strategy to push as, as early as possible in case that happens. Two straight ovals for the Star Mazda runners, but this is a lot different place from what we had at Lucas Oil Raceway. Our Mazda momentum. We sent Mark over to Andretti Autosport to find out more. Yeah, see, what differences are there between Indianapolis and here in terms of the way you're setting up the car? The biggest difference here has to do with the fact that we run such high banking and such high speeds here. So we run actually less aerodynamics, so a lot less downforce, and um, otherwise, Everything is fairly similar. OK, now talk about what is similar, because a lot of people might think that the shock package might be different or the camber package might be different, but you're saying they're really not? No, we run fairly close to what we ran at Indianapolis. Um, this, the shock package is almost identical. Uh, the cambers have slight variations, as do the tire pressures and the springs, but it's, it's very similar. All right, so you get a sense of just what's different and what's close between a place like Iowa Speedway and a place like Lucas Oil Raceway as we watch this battle for position. Yeah, and it also makes a lot of sense that the cars that were competitive at Lucas Oil Raceway Park, Sage Karam, for example, finishing second, Connor DeFilippi winning the race, are also competitive here. Jack Hawksworth all the way down Whoa. to the yellow line, wheel to wheel with Connor DeFilippi, but he may have finally made this pass happen on the bottom. In turn three and out of the front straightaway, which of course has the dog leg in it here in Iowa. Is this a case where on slick tires you don't want to put a tire on that paint strip? You definitely do not, but look at lap oh. traffic now coming into play. This is what I was talking about. Jack had to deal with Camillo Schmidt in the middle of that corner, had to lift, and Connor really capitalized. That's the experience that I'm talking about in this oval racecraft. And that replay XD on board shot gives you a real sense, I think, of what the air is like in these race cars and how important airflow aerodynamics is here. You can almost hear it when it went, oh, big wiggle from Hawksworth in the middle of two, all the way up the racetrack. That's definitely going to scare him a little bit, probably heading into turn three. But as I was saying, when you're on the onboard and you and you see the car pull into the draft of the car in front, you can hear the difference in the air. So you can only imagine the feeling difference that these drivers are getting from inside the cockpit. 15 of 100 laps complete. The Star Master Championship at Iowa Speedway. Sixth race of the 2012 championship season. Watching the points leader, Hawksworth, Connerty, Felipe battle for third. Sage Karam all alone out in front right now. Yeah, he's, he's really taken off. But I, I got to tell you, I, I'm, I'm heartbroken for Hawksworth in that one because he worked so hard for so many laps yeah. setting up that pass. And it all gets undone because of the lap car. Again, but he's going to go for it one more time. He's got the line down low. You can see him yeah. drifting up side by side with Felipe. No room for error there, guys. Quite often in oval track racing, we hear guys say the car's binding. Is this a place where it's better for the race car to be up a lane or two, or does it work better on the bottom for you? It really depends on how your car's handling it. Right now, we just saw another big wiggle from Hawksworth in the middle of the corner. He probably does not want to be running that low. When the car's loose like that, you want to try and open your hands up a little bit and run that second groove. But as long as Connor's staying up there and forcing him to the inside, he's going to be struggling. And again, Connor probably knows this. He can see this, and this is what you learn when you get more and more oval races under your belt. Now, part of this also is, as you said, you know, opening lanes, giving guys racing room. He's There's racing room for Hawksworth on the bottom here, but, oh, trouble for the nine car. Juan Pedrojita down on pit road. It's like he might have scraped the outside wall. And it looks like, yeah, the, the jack's under 
Checking the, checking the right side of the car there for suspension damage. Obviously, you don't want to go back if there's any risk of a suspension piece failing, putting one of these cars in the wall, risking the race car and, of course, the driver. Sage Karam loves this, of course, watching the battling behind him, watching other drivers maybe have issues. He's smooth. He's in clean air. He's all by himself, and he's way out in front of the 22 of Scuncia. Yeah, both these guys pretty having pretty boring races. Uneventful, I should say. <laughs> I guarantee you it's not boring from where they're sitting. And, and again, they're still having to deal with lap traffic from time to time, and all it takes is one caution, which is not impossible to get here for that all uh, all that hard work to be undone. Jack Hawksworth, the points leader in the Team Pelfrey 82, closing back in on Connor D. Filippi in the Junco Century, the mod space car for third spot. And not only is this a battle for a podium, it's a battle for the championship on track right here. And Jack, obviously the rookie, is learning about the ovals, and we talked to him about how important it is to pick up this craft. Yeah, a lot. I mean, this, you know, the gap between Indy and, and he is, you know, on both parts of the team and and myself, I put everything into this to, uh, you know, like you say, it's a big part of American open wheel racing. It always has, and, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be there in the future as well. So to, to be an IndyCar driver, you need to be good in all conditions. And, yeah, I'm working really hard myself to improve on this side of, um, you know, this side of the game. And, you know, hopefully that'll show tonight and we can get a good result. And he's learning. He's going to school here with Connor De Filippi. He's getting a good sense of airflow and, and now you have to work traffic. Yeah, he's learning from the most experienced guy in the series right now. So this is actually, I mean, as much as Connor's racing for position, he doesn't realize how much help he's actually giving his competitor here. <laughs> as Hawksworth is going to have the position across the line that time, he's got the line into turn one. And Ken Filippi hold it on the outside. Now it's going to be tougher. He's lost the momentum a little bit. And Oh, not quite enough to clear oh, this. The spotters are talking <laughs> very, very viciously with their drivers right now to give each other room, but he completes the pass. So very, very well done. It took him time, but he was patient. He thought it out. He planned it out. And he made it happen. I'm sure the next time you talk to Cutter Di Filippi, you'll tell him, don't take a hand off the wheel as you're coming off the corner, <laughs> the place where you're running a buck 60 out of the straightaway, right? Absolutely right. <laughs> but I know it's, it's great to see him. And Connor's experience shows through. When he's running that high line, you can see how close he runs. Uh, Jack Hawksworth there, you know, he gives him just an inch, no more, and, and that really comes, that confidence in, in car placement and, and your spatial awareness of how, you know, the dimensions of your car really just comes with practice. Meantime, the 88 car, Sage Karam continuing to dominate here at Iowa Speedway. There is Martin Scuncio in the Pullman Bus 22. One of the Yukos cars in second spot, trying to close it down a little bit. It looks like he may have actually done that a bit. And both these guys have been running in clean air, so they've, they've been able to protect their tires better than, say, Hawksworth and DiFilippi, who were running side by side, really grinding on each other. Now, do you wear a lot of right rear rubber off in a case at a place like this when you're doing that? You certainly can when you're racing side by side. All right, early in the going here at Iowa Speedway, Karam continues to lead Scuzio. We'll be right back. Iowa Speedway, the Star Mazda Championship, part of the Mazda Motorsports Hour. Alongside James Hinchcliffe, I'm Rick Benjamin. Mark Allen on pit road, Jack Hawksworth there. A little trouble getting by the 53 car. Yeah, he wasn't sure if he wanted to go high or low. He's always been more comfortable going low, but he's got he's to learn to work that high line, and so he did it there, which was good. One of the tough things, I think, here at Star Mazda and some other series, you probably run into it in IndyCar on ovals, that closing rate. Sometimes it's hard to judge how fast or how slow you are relative to the other car. It's very difficult, and often when heading into a corner, if a lap car's got a problem, you don't know if they're going to lift, how much they're going to lift, so especially that close to corner entry can really catch you off guard. Zach Veach there in the purple and green machine trying to get going here. He's had a tough day here so far. Yeah, he started up in fourth place and lost a couple positions in the first few laps, but, uh, you know, he's, he's a good driver. He, he likes the ovals. He finished on the podium uh, last time out at Lucas Oil Raceway, so maybe later in the race we can see him start to claw his way back up. Sitting in seventh spot with 30 laps down up front, it's still about 15 car lengths between your leaders, Caramere in the 88, the red machine, and right behind him, the 22 of Martin Scuncio. And I know it looks big. I mean, you know, it's a dozen car lengths or so, but I'll tell you what, if you have to lift in the middle of a corner for a lap car or something like that, that, that space is going to be eaten up very quickly at these speeds. So Scuncio definitely keeping Caram honest at this point. And he's been very patient so far. I think it's easy sometimes for young drivers to get frustrated. If you're stuck behind somebody, you're not making much progress, but Scuncio's kind of nibbled away at the lead of the 88 car. Yeah, now he's not nibbling. Now he's taking big chunks. He's getting really close. He's getting a good draft off Karam now. So all of a sudden, it's gone from cruise control to defense mode for Sage Karam as we look back at his pursuer. That replay XD onboard look back there, and you get a sense of just what the air does at a speed, a place like Iowa where the speeds are up around 150, 160. You, see, you certainly do, and you see him getting close there. You see he's got just half a wing to, to get his full wing maybe just to the outside of Karam there, trying to get some clean air, and if we stay on board long enough, 
Oh, we, we saw a great shot just before coming out of two of his car hit the big bump. Iowa's famous for this bump in turn two that really upsets these race cars. And Scuncio is really having to drive that car over it in turn two. Scuncio going into turn three here has narrowed the lead down to about six car lengths. So Sage Karam, uh, certainly a guy with his hands full at the moment. And th this is going to be making Karam nervous. I mean, he was he was just dominating early, just pulling away from everyone. And now all of a sudden something's changed. And so inside the car, you're thinking of what you can do with your line, what you can do with the any roll bar, which you can adjust the front any roll bar in these Star Mazda cars, trying to do anything you can to try and find those tiny, tiny little bits of speed and try and eke that lead back out. Up onto the front straightaway, part of the tri -oval here at Iowa. Kind of a D-shaped racetrack. We said tri -oval earlier, but really the front straightaway has a little bend to it, no big kink in it. You can take that flat, I'm sure. Absolutely, yes. No, it's uh, it, it very much like I said, it, it looks like a super speedway and it drives like a super speedway, despite actually being a short track. And again, Lap traffic coming in, stays high and out of the way. That's good. Gives the leaders a chance to stay on the preferred line and get around. No harm, no foul. But again, Scuncio, just he's sitting right there. He's waiting for that opportunity. You talked a moment ago. We started to talk a little about rhythm for a driver at a place like this. You're lapping this place probably race pace around 22 and a half, 23 seconds in a Star Mazda machine. You're used to racing these cars on road courses where you might be lapping a minute and a half, minute 40, depends on the venue. Is it a tough adjustment just to know, okay, brake here, gas here, or flat all the way, here's where I turn, because it happens so much quicker here. It does happen so much quicker, and it's also when you're comparing the, you know, the handling of the car lap to lap, it all happens so fast, you almost forget, wait, okay, how many laps ago was it in corner two that it had a wiggle or had an understeer? And you're really trying to pick these certain things apart, and it can be quite difficult. Cars fighting for six, lapping by Zach Myers, gold and red machine. Back on board with Zach Veach, meets him, the other Andretti Autosport driver. You play XD on board, look for the 77 car. Going way low there as he works up on Gabby Chavez. See, and this was good. Gabby had to lift a little bit coming off of two because he was lapping Zach Meyer. And Zach Veach really took a, you know, he took advantage of that opportunity to take a dive down the inside of turn three. Didn't quite work, but that's the kind of opportunities you're looking for to make these passes happen. These are momentum race cars, as we've talked about so often at an oval track here. Uh, momentum, I've got to think, is essential. You've got to maintain that at all times. You really do, and it, it's a factor of lifting. It sounds very, very commonsensical, but lifting as little as possible. And sometimes that means you actually lift well before the corner, but a lot less than driving it flat out into the corner, getting to the middle and either having a handling problem or catching a lap car and lifting 60, 70, 80% off the throttle. So there definitely is a strategy to how you work the throttle with these races. Tracks. Leaders up onto the backstretch. Karam in the 88 has led all the way after putting the Comfort Revolutions machine on pole. And then Martin Scuncio in the 22 for the Yukos team, the Pullman bus car. He's fallen back just a little bit. Okay, so why has that happened? And here's my theory on it. When they were driving along earlier, both these guys had had a lot of clean air running on their own. As we see that big bump in turn two. Wow. Sage is going to go high there. And, and I think when you're running in the clean air, your car handles a certain way. Now, as Scuncio caught up and got to within a few car lengths of Karam, all of a sudden he's driving a lot more in this dirty air. The handling completely changes. You've got to lift in different places, place your car in different positions, and that takes a few laps to get used to and get a rhythm of. So whereas Karam's still driving around in clean air, Scuncio is now dealing with another fast car in front of him, but his handling is going to be changing that close to Karam. So if he can sort that out, figure out what he needs to do, he might be able to, to mount an attack, but it could be a factor of the clean air in front is just dominating, and there's no way with this tire line that he's going to be able to fight back. Is it a setup issue if you're trying to fight through that dirty air? Do you just say, I've got to grip my teeth and drive through this? Or is it all about front wing angle and, and, and going to find a different part of the racetrack? It's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. You know, certainly with a, when you're going against a guy like Karam who knows how to win on ovals, knows how to win at Iowa, you know he's not likely to make a mistake. So you're looking for that opportunity. And when your tires start falling off, as we look at team boss Michael Andretti, you know, hoping <laughs> Sage can, ha can hang on to this one. Uh, but as, you, as the tires fall off and you get into that dirty air sometimes you have to grit your teeth hang on to it and keep your foot in it when you really don't want to <laughs> and just pray it comes out the other side uh, Sage Karam continuing to dominate here. Scuncio starting to reel him back in here. Now, I've seen this before, and tell me if I'm on the right track here. If you're Scuncio, maybe you're going to draw close three or four times before you finally figure it out, have an opportunity to pass. I, and I think that's absolutely a possibility because they've got, like I said, this, this clean air, the car handles one way, you get to dirty air, you got to start from scratch and figure it all out again. Lap traffic is going to be a factor here momentarily. Karam able to blow by one car, move up onto the front straightaway, and maintain his dominant position. He's led all the way so far. We'll be right back with more of the Mazda Motorsports Hour here at Iowa Speedway. 
Welcome back to Iowa Speedway. We're in Newton, Iowa, the Midwestern part of these United States, the Star Mazda 100, part of the Star Mazda Championship here in 2012. I'm Rick Benjamin. IndyCar star James Hinchcliffe alongside. Mark Allen has our coverage today down on Pit Road. And so far, this is looking like a carbon copy of what we saw at Lucas Oil Raceway, but with a different car and driver at the front of the pack. Right. So Sage Karam's actually switched positions now. He's gone from uh, from the pursuer to being pursued, and he's coming up on lap traffic there. That's uh, Diego Ferreira right in front of him. But Martin Scuncio is just right behind him. He is looking for that chance, looking for that small mistake, that slip up from Karam that just hasn't come yet. Replay XD onboard look from the leader's vantage point as he dives under that slower car and heads back down into turn one. And if you're Scuncio, is this the opportunity? You're thinking, okay, I've tried this a couple of times. I'm catching back up what do I do differently now yeah I think certainly we saw when they were both out in clean air Scunzio could get a bit of a draft get close but when he was running right behind them didn't have the car to do it it's, it's tough to compete with another car running in clean air so he really needs to rely on Sage getting into some dirty air from these lap cars having his handling change a bit and then trying to capitalize on that points leader Jack Hawksworth running third we show you the running order at the top of your screen halfway home in this 100 lap chase here at Iowa Speedway second of two oval track rounds for the Star Mazda championship this season Got to be proficient at this if you want to earn the Road to Indy scholarship from Mazda. Make that next step up into Indy Lights next year. You're going to run more oval races. More ovals in Indy Lights and then more ovals even again when you get to Indy Cars. So this is a craft that these drivers really have to think about and really have to work hard on perfecting because if you want to move up, this is an absolute necessity. Leaders lapping under Ashley Freiberg in the true car entry down in turn three. Now, if you're Scuncio and you've tried this a couple of times and you're going to use the draft to get back up on the leader, here's a look at Hawksworth, who runs third in the Team Pelfrey entry. Uh, he's got a comfortable lead in the points chase. A podium finish certainly helps him here today. Not a bad situation. Thinking back to Scuncio and his opportunities, and we know as he gets close to the leader here, they go under lap traffic. He's right there. Is this a matter of maybe thinking, I didn't have the front wing adjusted properly, I don't have quite enough grip? when I try to turn in? Uh, it's tough. It could be a mechanical thing. It could be a, an aerodynamic thing. But right now, it, it's just all about timing. That was the closest that anyone's gotten to Sage Karam since the start of this, this race. And, uh, and this is the kind of thing he needs to look for. He did a great job there at trying to make it happen. But obviously, Sage isn't going to let this go easily. And again, if you were in that situation being Scuncio at this point, is it a matter of waiting till you get to some lap traffic to kind of balk the leader, make him change lines a little? I think that's the play here because right now when you've got the lead car, he started on pole, so you know he's fast. He's got clean air. It's going to be very difficult to just beat him in a straight-up fight. You need another element. You need something to throw into the mix there, and lap traffic is what's going to do it. All right, we're in the second half of this one, an official race in the books. This one will count now if we do have a weather problem. Ooh. Here's a look at the weather radar. It's been dark all around the Speedway much of the day. We had a lot of rain earlier. Things dried out nicely. We've been clean and green so far here at Iowa Speedway. Two leaders are on the backstretch. Yeah, they are, but that, uh, that, that radar is very ominous looking, and I'll tell you, that does maybe put something into, uh, into Scuncio's head with his, uh, his team saying, make sure you push, let's go for it, because the rain could be coming. All these teams, of course, talking to their drivers about the conditions and the weather. Mark Allen, what's the leader hearing? A few laps ago, Martin Scuncio closed on our race leader. Karam's crew told him, don't worry about your beer. Just drive your line and you'll do fine. That's what he's doing in the march and is opening back up again. And that's just it. You know, you've, you've got to focus on your own race. You can't control what the car behind you is doing. Make sure you're looking forward and making your own car as quick as possible. Of course, we're lapping this place at a very quick pace. Lap times here around 22, 23 seconds at race pace. On one of our cameras on the backside, I just saw a couple of what looked like raindrops on the camera lens. So we'll keep an eye on that. Now, at a place like Iowa, a lot of heat in these tires, a lot of heat on the racetrack. There it is oh, yeah, again. You can, you can go a little bit here probably with maybe just a little bit of rain somewhere, but you don't want to do it for very long. You definitely don't want to do it for long. Any oval, as soon as you start seeing uh, raindrops on your visor, you get very nervous as a driver. Driver. The cars can get very loose quickly, and uh, right now it's okay. The raindrops that we're seeing on the camera, if that's all those guys are seeing on the racetrack, that's fine. But anything more than that, they're going to have to seriously consider throwing a caution. I'm sure the Yunkos guys are talking to Scuncio saying, hey, weather is in the area. You better get up on the wheel and take a run at this guy if you're going to win this race. Absolutely. This is no longer about conserving your tires for the last 50. You know, he's, he's done the first 50. He thought he maybe had still half the race to go, but that might not be the case. So now's the time to really put the hammer down and try and really force Sage into a mistake. 
if you're driving one of these cars, and James, you raced at Star Mazda very successfully a few years ago, do you spend a lot of time on the radio talking to your crew, or do you concentrate on driving the car? You know, that's a driver-to-driver -driver thing. Some guys are really, they really like to talk a lot. They chatter back and forth with the team. Other guys are very focused. They might be getting information, but not say much back. So it really is a driver-to-driver -driver thing. And I think right now, the, the coaching that Andretti Autosport is giving Sage Karam is exactly what he needs to hear. Stay focused on your deal, look forward, ignore the mirrors, and you'll be just fine. Karam has led all the way in the 88 car. Been a very strong day for him once again. And I'm sure he's thinking, OK, I may have this one in the bag. How do I convert this success to road course racing, which is what he'll have to do from here on out. Toronto, Edmonton, some of these other IndyCar venues. Tough to translate road course success to an oval. Sometimes tough to translate oval success back to a road course. Very difficult. As I was saying earlier, the skill sets between these two kinds of racetracks are completely different. It's almost no transferable skills other than the fact that it's got a steering wheel and four tires. You know, it's, uh, it's a very different craft. Of course, in stock car racing, where we spend some time as well, I've had guys tell me you can take a road course racer and make him an oval track racer more easily than you can go in the other direction. I think that's true because there's, there's a lot going on on a road course with the braking the shifting, the, you know, entry speed, acceleration. So there's just there's just more to learn. Plenty to learn as well if you're part of the Mazda Road to Indy, trying to move up from Star Mazda. Mark Allen now on Team Pelfrey's Club. Jeff, on the Road to Indy ladder, you're starting to take a little bit different approach than you have in the past with the USF 2000 series. Would you explain what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, uh, this being a uh, Team Pelfrey's second year, um, that's a full-fledged Star Mazda team. Um, we felt it was, it was a good time to expand a bit and, you know, we really want to support the entire Mazda Road Indy ladder, but also we, we have an eye towards the future as well. And, um, you know, we, we got to know a, a young American kid from, from Orlando, Florida, um, a real good young driver in Spencer Piggott, and, uh, you know, saw something special in him and, and we, you know, Dale Pelfrey, our team owner, and, um, and I decided it was, it'd be a good idea to, you know, sign a, um, a, a junior driver to run in the USF 2000 series. Now we're not we're not technically fielding the car ourselves, but the relationship is more of a men mentoring relationship where we're um, you know, taking him under our wing and and overseeing his development in his career, along with um, the team, which is a great partner as well in Cape Motorsports with Wayne Taylor Racing. But you've also seen the latter concept work with one of the drivers that's in your current Star Mazda stable. Absolutely, I mean. One of our hot young rookies here in Petri Savanto, he won the USF 2000 championship last year as a rookie driving for Cape Motorsports. So um, the relationship kind of made a lot of sense. And we were lucky enough to sign him here this year, and he's got a bright future as well. Yes, Savanto in the 81 and Spencer Piggott, who we see in the USF 2000 series. These are two young drivers I think we're going to hear a lot more from in the next few seasons. Certainly, you know, Spencer's been massively impressive in USF 2000 this year. You know, did the right thing, stayed there, really going for the championship. And, and Petri, you know, you have the champion moving up. This is exactly what the Mazda Road to Indy is all about. And, and he's performing very well, I think, in his first season here in Star Mazda. Certainly is. Jeff Fickling looking on as his uh, charges and Team Pelfrey livery uh, do very well here today. Certainly Jack Hawksworth dominating this series so far leading the points championship in Star Mazda. A good run here today, sitting in third spot. Michael Andretti and the rest of the entrance along Pit Road, keeping an eye on the action here at Iowa Speedway. Scuzio still trying to chase down Sage Karam. Back at Iowa Speedway on the Mazda Motorsports Hour, the Star Mazda Championship coverage today of the Star Mazda 100 with James Hinchcliffe, I'm Rick Benjamin, Mark Allen on Pit Road. Sage Karam dominating here again, second straight year. He's going to be smiling quite a bit, I suspect, when this one is over. So far, only Martin Scuzio has really been able to get close to him. That's true, but Jack Hawksworth has now joined the train as they, yeah. they stack up behind Bruno Pauly. He's the ninth place car, so they've lapped their way into the top ten. And these guys are still racing. They're not letting the leaders go by. They, the leaders genuinely have to get by these cars because they're still racing in their own right. Inside 30 to go, and Hawksworth may be set to mount a little bit of a charge here. Uh, in the late going. Meantime, the Junkos team trying to help their young driver, Scuncio, challenge for the lead. Downstairs to Mark. Ricardo, how concerned are you about the weather? Well, I think like everybody is, you know, we was watching the weather. Sometimes you feel some drops and we are in the window of rain anytime. So we just need to see what we can do. And, and I know it's already past halfway of the race, so we'll see what can happen, you know. We get all the way to the finish. Does Martin have enough car to take the lead? Yeah, I mean, he's 
somebody is not easy to pass when you are a little bit faster only. So he's waiting for the right time. That's the key, waiting for the right time. That's what we've been saying all along. And, you know, he's had a couple opportunities. It hasn't quite worked out. But again, you're, you're going against a very quick driver with a very quick car. It's going to be tough to do no matter what situation you're in. And now that lap traffic is no longer a factor, as we see more raindrops on that lens on the backside of the racetrack on that camera lens, that always allows Sage Karam. We've seen it all day long. Uh, it allows him to open the lead back up again. Here's Hawksworth, though, challenging for second. And now Scuncio has to start looking backwards as much as forwards. And Hawksworth, again, he's, he's not working that high line as well. He's, he's hitting the bumps there now. We saw him loose down low early on. It's, oh, even on, the, even on the onboards now, you're starting to see these raindrops. This is getting a little bit dicey out there. It is indeed. As the laps wind down here at Iowa Speedway, Hawksworth third for Team Pelfrey, trying to reel in Scuncio, who's running second here. And Sage Karam all alone out in front. But you, you got to be impressed with Hawksworth. This is definitely a big big step forward from where he was at the last oval race, Lucas Oil Raceway Park. He's running third, he's tracked down second place, who's a much more experienced driver on the oval, so I, I'd say his education is coming along nicely. Do the banks here help you that much, though? I mean, would that give a young driver confidence, knowing he's got that banking to help him hold the car in the corner? In, in a sense, the flatter tracks almost feel more like a road course, so uh, some drivers that come from a road course background actually prefer the flat tracks, like Lucas Oil Raceway, like Milwaukee, because it feels like two very quick road course corners. The banking is sort of what gives your your whole you know equal equilibrium if you will a whole different sensation Karam on the bottom of the racetrack now inside coming up on 25 laps to go at Iowa Speedway if we get the whole distance in uh, judging by the amount of rain speckles we were seeing on the camera lenses on the back side of the racetrack not sure that not the same situation on the front this is not that big a place you'd think whatever the weather is on the back stretch would be the same on the front stretch. yeah that would make it too easy though right that's the problem there if you see on board now with stages he's coming up to actually lap his uh, his team Zach Veach again not not uh, I don't think the race that Zach was hoping for after the performance that he had at Lucas Oil Raceway. Yeah, need to turn one. Karam kind of fighting that wheel just a little bit here. Looking on Ashley Freiberg once again put her another lap down in the 91 car. Be interesting to see if teamwork comes into play here yeah. as the uh, the race leader goes to, to lap his teammate. But we'll, uh, we'll we'll see if that if it comes to that. Now, Scuzio trying to stay close enough to Sage Karam to mount a late charge. He couldn't have encountered Ashley Freiberg in a worse place. No, he couldn't have, but now he has got his mirrors all full of Jack Hawksworth. And obviously, he's hungry. He knows he's ahead of, of Conor Filippi on the racetrack. And, and he's, uh, again, I'm, I'm super impressed with what he's done here today. Hawksworth. Oh, Hawksworth. Wheel comes off. He slams the wall in turn three at Iowa Speedway. That will bring out the caution. A tough break indeed, literally, for Jack Hawksworth, the points leader, who had that one get out from under him going into turn three. That was uh, that was a very bizarre wreck. I, I can't tell if something broke on that car. I mean, you, you see the right rear wheel fold underneath the car. I mean, that is that is a very bizarre accident. I'm not sure if he lost it in the in the wheel folded as a result of the force or maybe something actually went wrong and caused him to spin. I know we saw him having some loose moments earlier in the race, but very bizarre. We see it at full speed here. That was sudden. That was sudden. That maybe looks like something went wrong on that race car. Hard to tell for sure. A variety of things could have caused the issue. Rear wing comes flying off. Hawksworth uh, seeming to be okay. The Homatro safety team from IndyCar there quickly. You can see him moving in the cockpit. Young driver, very tough kid. Not happy with what happened, obviously. Well, no. I mean, this is a heartbreak for him. He was sitting great in championship position. He was going to be on the podium, likely. Let's go on board with him now, see if we can hear anything. Let's listen. Yeah, absolutely. That no was a warning. failure. That was a failure, 100%. Cars do not spin quite that quickly on their own. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, part of the oval education, unfortunately, is, is dealing with an accident, dealing with hitting the wall. Word it is that fans have got to vacate the main grandstand in the grandstand areas here at Iowa Speedway. We are under caution for the Hawksworth wreck, but we're told that severe weather is in the vicinity and moving this way quickly. Ricky Junko's talking to his driver, Scuncio, in second spot. No hard rain yet on the uh, pit road area, but it looks like it is right at hand. What you'll be doing right now is talking to your driver, asking what they see. Oh, I was going to say what they see from the racetrack, and apparently it's enough rain to, to warrant the end of the race. So check and flag for Sage Karam back-to-back victories here at Iowa. Great run for Karam. He dominates. Scuncio will get credited with second. We'll be right back. Moments ago in Iowa, checkered flag had to wave a bad wreck and then rain, but that hands the win to Sage Karam. He's with Mark. And Sage Karam makes it 2-4-2 two two here at Iowa Speedway. And Sage, you said getting into turn one on the start was so important. Tell us about what got you to the point at the start of the race. 
Uh, I mean, uh, I knew lap one was going to be important, and um, I got quite a good jump there um, going into turn one, and um, really got to hold up my hold off my competitors there. And um, from there, it was just uh, some smooth sailing. Um, definitely the hardest race I've ever had at Iowa. Um, that they they totally gave me a run for my money this time, and. Um, the car wasn't perfect, but we, you know, we worked with the tools inside the car and got it to where we liked it and just had to run consistently. Tell us about the battle with Martin Scuncio because he came up on you quickly before mid-race. Oh, yeah. he. I mean, um, we were gaining like a two-second lead. Then all of a sudden, the uh, front started going off tires. And then um, all, all of a sudden, I knew he was on my he was on my attenuator. So I just really had to just keep my head down, just focus, and keep running consistent, consistently. Um, I mean, really, I just had to thank everybody. I mean, I put this deal together. It's just awesome to be back on top again. Sage Karam, his first win of the season, comes in impressive fashion at Iowa. He wins the 2000 race back in 2010 here, and now back-to-back -back Star Mazda races. That's three in a row at Iowa for Sage Karam. But this man, Conardy Felipe, held on to a podium position with maybe not the best car. Let's talk to the championship contender about his race. You came away with a third-place finish. You have to be impressed with that. Yeah, I mean, the team was in incredible job incredible job the car was phenomenal but it was flat out every single lap didn't lift once i worked my way through traffic well and uh you know we didn't quite we had a few pickups in qualifying and that type thing but you know we pulled through with the podium um you know i hate to see jack go out like that he was having a strong run as well but you know uh it's still a long season but definitely a great finish and i'm very proud of you know the 124 mod space twin coast racing machine it was a incredible finish for us some days the third is the best you can hope for as the rain pours down on us here at Iowa Speedway. There's Steve Felipe in third, then Petri Savanto and Gabby Chavez. Zach Beach runs sixth in front of Polly and Ferreira. Zach Meyer and Ashley Freiberg, the rest of the top ten. The big story, Jack Hawksworth, the points leader, wrecks hard. He has to settle for 15th. If Jack hadn't crashed and the Raiden hadn't come, could you have beaten Sage? Good question. I don't know. Uh, all depends on the car he had. Uh, I think he had a pretty good car. He came me really, really fast. But I still had a pretty good car, and he could not pass me like right away. So it, it, it's going to be hard for him. Solid day for Scuzio. Frightening moment for Jack Hawksworth, the remnants of his car on the hook earlier. Mark caught up with the guy who was the points leader. Jack, it's good to see that you're OK. You were having such a good run. What put you out? Um, yeah, we, we were obviously we had a, we were having a really strong fight back then, and uh, yeah, we had a rear tire failure um, into the into corner three, and uh, yeah, that unfortunately put us out of the race. Disappointing. Did you have any warning? Uh, I had some vibration on the uh, on the back on the, the the back straight just prior to the corner, and then uh, so yeah, I, I sort of knew something was up, but then obviously um, yeah, I, I felt it when it blew up properly. So now the championship chase becomes much more of a dogfight. Well, you know, I don't think so, really. Um, we saw, t you know, we saw today that we were really, really quick, um, you know, despite some really dubious driving from a couple of the rivals. And, uh, you know, I fully expect that when we get back to the road courses, uh, the street courses next week, the pace we've shown on the over and the pace was from the start of the weekend, we're going to uh, we're going to dominate races. So, you know, hopefully that'll be, you know, that'll happen and we can go on, you know, fight back now. I mean, clearly he's he's confident and wants to get back into position there, and, and he's dominated before, so let's see if he can do it again. Connor DiFilippi takes over the points lead, however. Hawksworth last, DiFilippi third. It's a four-point margin, and Martin Scuzio right there with a nice second today. Sage Karam gets himself back into contention as well. That's it for the oval portion of this year's schedule in the Star Mazda Championship. Next up, the street course at Toronto. It ought to be a wild one. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage today on the Mazda Motorsports Hour. For James Hinchcliffe and Mark Allen, I'm Rick Benjamin. We'll see you next time.